keep doing this, but we'll give it a good go. So, uh, this is a chick that's been hatching for a few days. Um, I believe it's slightly underdeveloped. Um, so, I'm assisting it to hatch. Now, I've got a few things here. I've got my betadine, I've got tweezers, a toothpick, and a cotton bud. So the better thing is for if I get it all the way out and it's uh, exposed yolk on its belly button, which if I do, I'll show you another one in a second, um, it'll get a little bit of better thing put on it uh, just to help it keep from infection. So I've made some lukewarm water up, got a temperature gauge here, so that's at about 38 degrees, that's not too bad. So I'm just going to put some water around the membrane just to soften it up. Now I've been doing this throughout the day and that actually helps the any veins that are showing to retract as well. Um, certainly this isn't the way we'd like it to hatch and I, I don't normally do this, but obviously this is a, a bird that we really need to try and be successful with. So as that membrane's loose, uh, wetting up, I'm just trying to uh, get it to fold back a bit off the bird so I can make more room for him. So the biggest thing with this is to be extremely patient um, and do it as a last last straw. So this, this bird had been out in the nest and had been trying to hatch for about four days. Oh well, external pip about three days ago. Um, but I can also see that it hasn't developed enough in that at this point it shouldn't have any veins left. So it's actually tried to hatch too early, which means it, it's just not quite right. It wanted to get out so he's still got a bit of life which is good he's chirping away so the biggest problem when we help hatch birds is what we call bleeding out so this membrane if it's got too many uh, live veins in it and we pop one of those veins or rip it it'll lose a lot of blood and it doesn't always kill them but it can be very detrimental to the bird so we don't want it to bleed too much and that's why we take our time so the water, if we put the water on the membrane and the membrane has no red veins in it, really bright red veins, then we can actually hatch it a bit quicker. But this one, when I started, I put the water on like this and I could see that there was bright red membranes, uh, bright red veins, which meant that he wasn't quite ready to come out. By putting water on it like this, lukewarm water, it made the, the red veins, the ones that still had blood in them, they retract. They come away from the membrane which allows me then to enter through the membrane without actually um, making the uh, egg bleed out as such or the yolk. So for this stage I'm just going to get his head out to give him some room. Clean him up a bit, it's a little bit yucky. Sorry little man. And that's it, I'm just gonna leave him like that for now. Give him a break, let him warm up. Uh, put him in a really high humidity. And I'll come back to him in a um, few hours. Now this little one is his nest mate. That come out a bit earlier. Come on buddy. Now, I haven't rushed to feed this one because I can see that his yolk wasn't fully absorbed. You can still see it in his belly and his belly button's a bit exposed. So I haven't actually touched this bird since I hatched him out this morning. So there's two things I'm going to do to him now, which is the first one is just to get the last of this membrane off his head here. Just to, so it doesn't stick. I could have done that later, but I get it done as soon as I can. him done there and then the second thing I'm going to do is just make up a little bit of uh, betadine slightly diluted just to go on his belly button again so that it um, doesn't have any bacteria growing there or infection and that belly button's not terrible. It's, a, it's not great. We'd rather it be a bit more sealed than that from the get-go. If he hatched by himself, it would have been. But that's acceptable. Now, often when we do the betadine on an egg that's really exposed, when they've got a badly exposed yolk, 
um, it's very important to maintain that for a longer period. Whereas that one, that's probably the only time I'll better Dean him, I'll keep an eye on it. That should dry out and the belly button should be fine. I'll just change his nest. So I'm not going to feed him yet. I'm going to let that egg yolk that's there keep on subsiding for a little bit longer. And I'll monitor him. Um, if I give him anything at all, it'll just be some, uh, just some very, very fine, just water basically, just to give him something to go on. If I'm worried about, if he wasn't so lively, I'd actually give him a tiny bit of hand room food, extremely runny, just to give him some energy. Um, and then I won't really start feeding properly until I see him start to pass, start to shit basically. And his first shit to be very black and yuck. And then from then on, um, we can feed a bit more intensely. Anyway, hopefully we go good with them. We'll see how they go.